we are dedicated to delivering impactful and empowering news to minority communities. Our interview segments feature bold and thought-provoking commentary that showcase insightful and diverse perspectives. We amplify the authentic voices of minority newsmakers and industry leaders to foster a deeper understanding of issues and events that significantly impact the lives and welfare of minority communities across South Carolina and beyond. The day after W.J. Keenan High School's homecoming, a heartwarming gathering took place at the Barnes & Noble bookstore in Columbia. Keenan alumni, brimming with excitement, came together for another homecoming, this time for one of our own, former classmate Corella Augustus, now a talented celebrity photographer, had come home as part of his book tour to celebrate the release of his new book, Black Hollywood, Reimagining Iconic Movie Moments. Amidst the laughter, tears, and well wishes, old high school friends took pictures and reminisced about classroom antics and neighborhood escapades. We also shed a few tears for friends no longer with us. It felt like old times. Despite his success, Carell, affectionately known as Tommy by many of our classmates, hadn't changed a bit. He remained the same old Tommy from Greenview off Campanella down by the park. Carell's book, serves as a visual tribute to black actors and their invaluable contributions to the film industry. Through his book, he showcases black actors taking center stage in iconic Hollywood movie moments, shining a much needed spotlight on their talent and artistry. After the book signing, I had the opportunity to chat with Tommy and learn more about the evolution of the book project and what's next for the former Keenan Raider turned celebrity photographer and off. Tommy, man, what's it like being back home, man? Oh, man, dude. It's the love that I was shown today, dude. It, it's, it's overwhelming. It's, uh, I got really emotional a couple times seeing old high school friends. The principal from my elementary school showed up. Just, just phenomenal. I told my publisher when, when I got the deal and they talked about going on a, a tour, I'm like, I gotta go home. Now, I didn't know if that was gonna be eight people showed up, 11, 15, six. I just wanted to come home because it's important to me to show people, you know, that's, that's grown up on the streets that I grew up on, right. that just reach for the stars. And it don't have to be photography, it ain't gotta be nothing entertainment. Whatever you're doing, reach for the stars and just go for it. Well, and you know what they say, it's always good to see a local boy doing good. Oh, man. Uh, congratulations Thank to you. you for the book. Thank you so uh, much. Can't wait to crack it open and oh, look. Um, tell me, where did you come up with this idea? So this idea came to me the, the day that Michael Jackson died, because uh -huh. in L.A., where I live now, his, um, his music was everywhere. It's coming out of the cars, it's coming out of the houses, it's coming out of the stores. It was everywhere, and to, you know, no matter how you felt about Michael Jackson, he left a legacy of art. And you know, now you got three and four year olds who was never alive when Michael Jackson was alive, like dancing and discovering his music. And I just thought, what a way to leave uh, a sign to the world that you were here. And I wanted to do something that involved African Americans. I wanted to do something I could dedicate my life to and see it through until the end, and just uh, you know, hopefully create an impactful work which is how this idea came about. I always wanted to do something focused on black people and black entertainers and celebrities, but I wanted to do something, not just walking down the street, I wanted to do something that, you know, I could give myself to, no matter how long it took. How has the book been received by the industry? Oh man, dude, the, re the reception has been overwhelming. Like, like really. Um, you know, you get some comments here and there, but 98% of all the comments I've gotten have been positive. People are uncomfortable with what I'm doing, which is recreating all these scenes from movies and iconic images, because they grew up with certain ideas in their head about what it meant to be in Breakfast at Tiffany's or Mission Impossible or whatever. And I'm sort of flipping that on them and they're having to confront what that means and that's not the most comfortable place to be. So they, they keep, you know, 
sort of, you know, voicing some discomfort uh, with that. But it's okay. I was uncomfortable as a kid with things I saw, so they can, they'll live. I got you. Yeah. Man, um, I've, I've seen some of the shots on Facebook. Look, really looks good. Tell me, what is your best? I won't say what's your best shot because I won't get you in trouble. <laughs> but what's the most exciting or the shot that you had uh, the best or the most unique time doing? Yeah, so I have a couple shots. One of my favorite shots is Corbin Blue. Okay. And I shot him as Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible. And it's him being suspended right above, um, you know, the, the, the floor. Yeah. And the reason that's so important to me is because the shot came out excellently. I showed up at 7 a.m. Corbin Blue wasn't getting to set until 7 p.m. So we showed up at 7 just trying to figure out how to suspend him in the air, how to make it safe, how to make it, um, you know, be able to hold him. And I'm like 50 pounds heavier than he is. So once it held me, I knew we could hold him. Uh, and he got there, man. And there's a great YouTube video where you can see he was just spinning on the thing. He's just having a really, really good time. And that's what you want to do with anything that you do, it's particularly if people are giving you their time and you know their likeness, you want to make sure they're having a good time and they feel safe. So that's one of my favorites. And another one of my favorites is Dow M for Murder with Nadine Ellis, because we watched the scene of the movie before we, right before we shot. And the movie is about this woman that's you know being sort of apprehended within her house before we all had different lines in our houses and all that. So wherever the call was coming from, it was coming from in the house and she was hearing it for the first time. So she was confused, she was, she was, the facial expression was just crazy, but Nadine Ellis nailed it. You see that she's scared, confused, bewildered, you know, upset, and just don't know what's happening. So that that's what make that one of my favorite shots. And last week we had a signing in, in Hollywood and she sat next to me and I just kept going to her picture like Nadine like you nailed this like that's what a photographer wants like you nailed it so those are two of my, my with all of these great shots yeah. how did you narrow down what went on the cover oh <laughs> dude so so I actually had an idea for what I thought the cover should be and there's politics involved right so I originally wanted uh, Blair Underwood on the cover for um, for The Shining. Okay. That was one of my, that was the one I wanted for the cover, but we did a test. What happens is my publisher sent the covers options out to like a hundred people and whoever got the most votes, they brought back to me because I ultimately had to approve it. I could have fought for it, but they sell books, I don't. So I just wanted to make sure that they were on the right track to, to, to making sure we got a great cover. Ultimately, I do think we chose probably one of the best shots that could have ever been the cover because it it draws you in it's such a popular image that people know notice and you'll see it from across the room think it's audrey hepburn but when you get to it you know it's like oh no this is a black girl <laughs> but you're already committed so now you grab the book and you flip through it so i ultimately think it was the best shot okay as a celebrity photographer you shot a to b to you know to the d list What's a person that you haven't shot yet that you would love to shoot? A person that I have not shot yet that I would love to shoot exclusive. Because I've shot a bunch of them just like, you mm -hmm. know, passerby. But if I had the option to shoot just like an eight-hour session, it would probably be Oprah or Janet Jackson. I've shot both of them before. Okay. But it was, like I said, it was... It was just not in a, it was like in an event situation. And uh, I photographed Viola Davis's wedding and Oprah was there. So I got a couple shots of Oprah. But, and that, but that's different from, hey, she's walking into a studio, I set up all the lights, we're gonna have a session. And then Jenna Jackson the same way, I was doing BTS on a job with her. So I wanna be the, you know, on the top of the call sheet with them and the photographer. And I, you know, that's coming, I'll let you know when I make that, that happen. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's next for you? What's next is, uh, you know, I think when I get back to LA, we're starting volume two. I got <laughs> 12 people already ready to go. And we're gonna do this thing where a lot of them from volume one come back and do like a different shot for volume two. We're gonna, we're gonna change it up a little bit and we're gonna do like ads from the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s with a lot of the same people, some entertainment stuff. Um, but, you know, I got like 12 ready to go. It won't take 12 years, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, um, I'd like to thank you for, for coming home and, uh, and being able to celebrate with you. 
Um, before I let you go, yeah. I like for you to look into the camera, man, and just give a shout out to the class that came out to support you, man. Yes. So hey, everybody, what's up? Thank you guys so much, all my Keenan High School class of '93 homies. Y'all came out. Y'all represented Paris Walker, Teosha Shin, um, Terkessa Brandt. Michael Bailey, all you guys came out. It was so great to see you guys. I wish I'd have known about uh, Homecoming last night. Mark Gibson, I signed a book for Anita Free today, who I got most unique with in high school. So it was such a great trip down memory lane, and thank you guys so much. I'm always coming home. I know where I come from. I always come back. So thank you so much for the support.